Yeah. Um, okay. One minute. <laughs> Should I stand I-66 yeah. inside the Beltway? That was one of our successes. The governor did mm -hmm. carve out a very good deal. I do want to thank the Arlington County board members who are here uh, for being reasonable and, um, and, and willing to work with the state and with the other parts of the region in, in solving this transportation problem. Uh, <coughs> what the deal is, is when you know, we take the Beltway and it connects to 66, Heading east, there will be an additional lane added inside the current uh, footprint of 66. And um, so that should be some congestion. Yes, tolls will begin during rush hours, heading east and west, but uh, you will have an option that you don't have now. The, the single person occupant vehicle will be able to travel, but the toll starting in 2017. The tolling will be dynamic. Um, two person vehicles, what you're doing now, you can continue to do. We will not be paying a toll until sometime after 2020, and then two person vehicles would pay a toll, and only three person vehicles and more would we travel toll free. So the challenge that we tried to come up with was. We try to increase the capacity to allow some relief on congestion. We try to man, we're trying to manage the traffic so that too will help us with congestion and people will be able to move. And it is our goal that folks will stay off of neighborhood streets um, and that when we, decide, when we design the thing, there'll be a lot of soundproofing and, and it will be, in fact, uh, it'll work and it will meet the needs of the surrounding communities. The conversation has just begun. I encourage you to go out to the meetings that VDOT will be hosting. There will be plenty of uh, opportunity, really, to, to uh, critique the plan. And the plan, I'm sure, will, will be nipped and tucked in. Thank Changed you. as necessary. Um, thank I, you for the question. Yes, thank you. Uh, and I have a question for uh, Delegate Lopez. Can you tell us about some of those bad bills that uh, that the House passed? And then, uh, well, you come out with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let me just go down the list. Republicans block Medicaid expansion. More Democrats in the House will change. Republicans fire extremely qualified Supreme Court justice. That wouldn't happen in the Democratic world. Republicans prevent any redistricting reform. Republicans vote to defund Planned Parenthood. Republicans want more guns in schools and cars and workplaces. Democrats want common sense gun safety regulations. Republicans pass bills making it more difficult to vote. Republicans block common sense reforms on juvenile justice reform. Republicans tax reform from Bush to Trump <laughs> means more income and wealth inequality even for everyone. Republicans remove funding that would assist <coughs> former offenders who seek restoration of their voting rights. Republicans continue to their fight against new Americans. Republicans sought to ban all abortions after 20 weeks without regard to health of the mother or the fetus. Republicans continued their efforts to amend the Constitution even when it wasn't needed. <laughs> Republicans defeated efforts to increase the minimum wage. They denied efforts to provide every child access to full day kindergarten. They took money away from public schools with tax credits to support private schools. They used religion as a reason to discriminate. Let me repeat that. They used religion as a reason to discriminate. They defeated bills to ensure non-discrimination in employment and in housing. Let me repeat that. They defeated bills to, to <coughs> ensure non-discrimination in employment and in housing. And they denied the science of climate change. <laughs> they denied the science of climate change. Repeatedly. So we talk about this being a very good year. But every time we try to put forward sensible gun violence prevention legislation, it was defeated out of hand. Every time we tried to put forward strong environmental protection legislation, it was defeated out of hand. Except, Except your gun rights. Yeah. Your, that actually, very, you should speak to that right now. Uh, okay, well, unfortunately we should, but we have to be out of here at nine, so. Can I just, uh, yeah, like 30 just, seconds. Yeah, you know, 30, 30 seconds. seconds. I just wanted to mention, for those that didn't know, uh, Barbara and I lost a colleague this week, yes. Senator yes. John Miller of Newport News. Yes. Um, he was a leader on redistricting reform, physical fitness for kids, and really military issues as well. He was a wonderful man and um, means we're gonna have another vacancy in the state senate. He's just a great guy and uh, it was really sad and unfortunate. Couldn't have asked for a better senator. So he'll be missed.
about what it would be like <laughs> if we could have 51 votes in the House of Delegates and the kind of progress we could make in the Commonwealth of Virginia. So don't give up on that dream. We're going to get there. We all need your help. 51 is the number. Okay. All right. Thank you.